Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> oh. uh, hope y'all doing well. We've spent the morning so far prepping for the cold weather, doing a little bit of fence repair. Uh, it's a beautiful day right now. It's uh, 52 degrees, the truck says. And, uh, and it's nice. The sun's shining. It's a little bit of breeze. It makes it feel a little cooler than it really is, but it's nice out. Uh, we got some pigs moved around. Hopefully got them winterized. coming up here the next for the next like three days and it's gonna slowly warm up a little bit i mean what are you gonna do after all it is winter time january february tend to be our worst months so yeah that's what we were doing this morning no more farmhands stayed home from school big buck he's nice but uh we're gonna have uh, somewhat of an announcement with the number one farmhand here before long his school uh how he goes to school and be a good thing uh, it'll definitely be a good thing for him but anyway I don't want to get too much into that right now so oh that thing's irritating uh, I don't know this uh of uh, wind turbines, turbines. 
lines to uh, generate electricity up around here. Well, in September, now granted these aren't more than three years old, but in September 23, they had two blades break off of one. And yesterday I saw where they had one fall over. I haven't heard why or anything. It just, you know, one of the lo local news channels reported it. And uh, it was pointed out to me. And uh, so, what is that? September, October, November, December, January. In less than four months, we've had two of them fail. Yeah, I don't think that's. And this this one yesterday, I believe it was yesterday when it happened. It was a catastrophic failure. It the whole thing fell over. Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard, and probably won't ever get to hear what caused that. You know, uh, I, there, it could be many things. Somebody made a miscalculation on their metal and didn't get it thick enough, or you know, there was some kind of I don't know something in the metal that weakened it. But they did put those up pretty quick. I forget how many of them there are. They did put them up really quick. I mean, they were working 24 hours a day on it. So, but it. Now, I, I have some mixed feelings about these big wind farms like that. And they're just after you get past the novelty they're ugly and the, the light pollution I mean I live out in the country there's you don't see you look up in there you don't see much artificial light and you know fortunately I can't see them from my house but they all have you know lights on them so that airplanes doesn't run, don't run into them and uh you know, they're just, they, they're ugly. They take up a bunch of space. I mean, and maybe it is the future, I don't know. But from what I'm seeing, and I would have thought, I mean, because this isn't new. I can remember back in the 80s when I drove a truck over the road, there was a huge wind farm that I would drive by occasionally out in California. So, you know, these kind of failures, uh, I would think they'd have figured out by now. But anyway. good side is, well, let me stick with the bad side here a little bit. All that electricity that the, that wind farm here in Barton County, Missouri creates goes south. It doesn't come up here. Now it's part of the electrical grid and you know it goes all over the place and we may get some of it back, but most of it goes south into Jasper County, which is the next county south, which, you know, is a much more populated county than Barton County is. So, but because they're in Barton County, they get taxed and uh, the schools get a little bit more money out of it. So that's a good thing.
done some other projects this afternoon since I had the farm hand available. This weather permitting, that's the problem with farming and having an off-farm job. But anyway, and, you know, you got to prepare for these things. You know they're going to happen. Cold weather, storms, snow and ice, electrical outages, you, you've got to prepare for them. So, it's a big old bowl there. Uh, you couldn't see my nose probably enjoy this video more if you could see it, but, uh, you know, prepare for, it. When, when somebody stop, starts talking about preparing, everybody starts talking about doomsday preppers, or that's what they start thinking about anyway, and, uh, you want to have, you know, you want to prepare for things that are likely to happen to you. It's kind of like carrying a spare tire in your vehicle. It's just a good idea. You may not ever need it, but if you do, you've got it. That's, uh, you know, kind of how I feel about the uh, handheld wireless hole punch devices. Joe Rogan podcast, the the Joe Rogan podcast. Okay, that's what it's called. Go listen to this. I mean, and, and a lot of it's just like him and another person just sitting down and having a conversation, and it goes where it goes, you know. And the last one I just finished up last night. They're about three hours long, so you know, they're great if you're road tripping. But uh, was with. Uh, was it Taylor Sheridan that got something to do with the whole Yellowstone thing? And it was a fascinating conversation. I mean, fascinating. Of course, the language gets a little salty at times, but, you know, we're all adults. We've heard, heard it all before. But I just... I, I think more of us should be sitting down having these conversations with each other, you know, and I, and I think it would be beneficial. So anyway, check out Joe Rogan. I don't know him. I get nothing from him, so, you know, never met him, and, uh, you know, I resisted listening to his podcast for a long time because I didn't think that there would be any commonality there, but there's a lot. Like I said, you know, we all ought to sit down and have conversations with each other. So, I'm almost at work. <clears throat> uh, let's look out for each other. Let's help each other when we can. And don't forget to pray. <laughs>